All right, today is June 29, 2017. It's uh, 10 o'clock, and this is a special meeting of the members of the State Liquor Authority. Present in Albany is Chairman Bradley and Commissioner Ford, myself, Secretary of Authority Donahue, and sitting in for, Deputy Co uh, for General Counsel Riano is Associate Attorney Furring. Uh, there are two items on today's calendar. Both are requests from the Council's Office for emergency orders of summary suspension. The first item is 1366M, Adolfo Jr. Corporation. And Mr. Russell Wilson, you're, you're here for that one? Yes. Okay. So thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Chairman Bradley, Commissioner Ford, I'm Jared Lassertosa, an attorney in counsel's office. And I am here to request that the full board uh, imposes an emergency order of suspension against Aldofo Junior Corp, uh, DBA Mi Palenque. Uh, it is a bar restaurant in the Bronx. Um, and counsel's office makes this recommendation after learning of a pattern of negligent supervision and the creation of a disorderly environment uh, inside and around um, the establishment um, and the uh, condoning of this behavior by me, Palenque management. Um, as brief way of background, this premise is located at 524 Brook Avenue in the Bronx. It is midway between 149th and 148th Street. This is a mixed residential commercial area. There are various businesses and apartment buildings um, within the immediate vicinity. So there is a uh, an unlicensed, uh, an unliquor licensed Peruvian restaurant right next door. There's a deli grocery next door, residential apartments immediately across the street on Brook Avenue as well um, as on 148th Street. Uh, there's a church less than 200 feet away as long as, uh, as well as various other residential, uh, excuse me, commercial establishments. Um, and I just want to direct your attention to some instances of disorder that have come to light uh, recently. Um, NYPD has sent us several referrals, the most recent of which was a, an assault and slashing of a female bartender on June 17th at 3.30 a.m., so that was last Saturday, no, uh, excuse me, um, not this prior weekend, uh, but the weekend before that, um, where a female bartender was working at the establishment. She was followed inside to the uh, restroom by a second female where she was assaulted. Um, her assailant, another female, produced a knife. The victim was slashed in the lower back. She then walked, uh, she was able to flee the scene and walked into the NYPD's 40th precinct where she was treated by emergency medical services for that laceration and other injuries. Uh, the 40th precinct responded to the establishment. However, by the time they had arrived, the assailant had fled with a weapon. Uh, so that is the first incident I wanted to direct your attention to. The second occurred on March the 12th of this year at approximately 2.15 a.m. when two security guards physically assaulted and robbed four individuals sitting in a car outside of the establishment. So there were four uh, individuals um, opposite the premise on Brook Avenue. Two security guards, um, I will, I'll withhold their names at the moment, uh, approached the, approach the victims in the car. They pepper sprayed the individuals in the car and then proceeded to pull the driver out of the car and rob him of his wallet and cell phone, um, the value of which total was $500. Those two security guards employed by the premise were arrested for uh, robbery in the second degree, a C felony, and assault with intent to cause physical injury in a misdemeanor. Uh, the victims received medical treatment. Um, and one, um, uh, very briefly, um, a patron was struck with a beer bottle on January 14th inside the premise at approximately 4.05 a.m. for which a disorderly premise summons was issued. Uh, a summons was also issued for overcrowding as 120 people were counted inside the establishment. Its maximum occupancy is 70. There are at least six other assaults that have come to light since February of last year inside of the premise. We have a referral for each one. Several of these involve uh, employees of the establishment, um, employees fighting with each other, a specific instance on August 22nd, um, another instance of a waitress being assaulted by an unknown party on um, February 14th of last year at approximately 4.40 a.m. 
Uh, and this is on top of eight other assault referrals we have immediately outside of the establishment, um, in front of the establishment on Brook Avenue. NYPD Vice has conducted two positive sale to minor operations on June the 10th and May 20th this year. So they had an undercover police agent go in, conduct um, uh, an underage um, compliance check, uh, which they failed. And um, this is on top of uh, the premise on paper, just to br note briefly, is supposed to be a Mexican restaurant. However, almost all of these incidences have occurred in the very, very early morning hours, uh, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., so this place is staying open um, very, very late into the evening. And on paper, as I said, it's supposed to be a Mexican restaurant. However, they have DJ dancing on Facebook and other social media. They have images and pictures of DJ dancing, um, and there is a, therefore there is a clear rational basis for this um, body to impose an emergency order of suspension to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the surrounding community, the patrons, and the employees of this establishment as well. How long have they been open? I believe they were first licensed in January 2012. Um, most of the referrals that I've received over the past few days from NYPD have gone back um, uh, several months. Um, I asked them to send me, I only asked them to send me everything from the past year, um, so that's all in front of you here. Um, but it's clear that this has become a focal point for police attention and has developed into a drain on the NYPD's resources. And the security guards that were arrested for robbery, were they working when that occurred? That information, uh, I, I do not have that specific information about whether they were um, on, on duty that night. It, they, they are identified as security guards. Their name is on other uh, paperwork that we have um, as licensed, uh, as, as uh, security guards employed by the establishment. Um, so that, that information I don't have. However, they were present at the establishment, or at least in front of the establishment at 2.15 a.m. on uh, March the 12th. Do you have any idea how long this place has been acting as a nightclub based on the review of the Facebook stuff? That looks, the, I, I kind of stopped in the fall of last year. So, you know, just scrolling through the Facebook, Facebook page, it's been going on since at least the fall of last year. Um, I, I just, uh, due to time constraints, I, I kind of just cut off when I had enough. And, you know, the number of promotions and videos that I saw on there was very cumulative just going back to the fall of last year. So, um, but of course, a, a, a more thorough review will be conducted um, when, um, when time permits. Those guards, uh, we, Im we imposed a uh, $1,000 fine on them, which was paid back in March from uh, October for employing security guards. So they, are they in compliance with, with uh, having guards now, as far as we know? They amended their method of operation to include security. So that charge you referenced, Commissioner, was a failure to conform to the application charge, uh, failure to conform to the application charge, um, as they were not licensed by us for security. Um, that was my case. Uh, upon seeing that they had security, they did amend their method of operation. I informed their attorney that their employees and their security guards had to all be in compliance with security guard regulations, i.e. obtaining a secu uh, proprietary security guard license or hiring a company, a licensed security guard company. However, um, these individuals, I, 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 don't have informa I, I don't have information about whether um, these individuals are, um, are licensed by the state at this moment. Okay. Anything else, Chairman? No, unless you agree to vote. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to vote for the uh, emergency summary order of suspension. Uh, this licensee has been established, what, since uh, 2012. Uh, bartender assaulted and stabbed in a restroom, which, to the best of our knowledge, uh, the licensee did not report to anyone. Uh, guards being arrested, uh, overcrowding, didn't really mention sales to minors. Uh, 16 NYPD assault referrals since February of 2016. Uh, Clearly operating without uh, outside of their uh, official method of operation. Uh, so, with all that said and more, I, I vote to suspend. I'm going to vote to suspend as well for the same reasons Commissioner Ford stated. It's obvious that this place is a, a 
risks of public health, safety, and welfare and requires an emergency suspension at this time. So I vote to suspend. Thank you very much. The next item is 1366N, Capital International Corp. It's Bronx OP 129-1255. Morning, Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this matter is submitted to the members of the New York State Liquor Authority for consideration of an emergency order of summary suspension pursuant to Section 4013 of the State Administrative Procedures Act. Council's office makes this recommendation in light of a referral from Lieutenant Iglesias, the Special Operations Lieutenant of the New York Police Department's 44th Precinct, stating that a slashing erupted inside the licensed premise in the early morning of Sunday, June 25th at around 3.30 in the morning. Three victims were viciously slashed during this attack, and this incident is only uh, the latest in a string of events that make this place a focal point for police attention. Uh, regarding the slashing in particular, it occurred at approximately 3.30 in the morning on June 25th. Two women were exiting the club, still inside the club. One of the women uh, got in an altercation with another patron. Those two women started fighting. The woman's friends started to break up the fight. Uh, the fighting grew out of control. The manager stepped in, tried to break up the fight. The fight was still going on. And then the assailant ultimately whipped out a box cutter, slashed the two women in the face and the manager across the chest. The NYPD was called and the attacker fled and is currently still at large as far as I know. Uh, this incident, as I said, is the latest in a long string of violent and very potentially violent crimes. Uh, Council's office currently has another open prosecution for focal, focal point and we are prepared to go forward on July 18th for that focal point case. The notice of hearing and bill of particulars is sent out. And specifically, I want to draw your attention to on January 1st, 2017, NYPD officers responded to the premises and they arrested a patron for having a defaced firearm. And a defaced firearm means that the serial number was shaved off and this firearm is illegally trafficked. It is a federal crime and a state crime. It is a very uh, serious crime. Also on January 1st of this year, uh, a manager was issued a summons for prohibited hour sale after 4.30 in the morning. Many patrons' cars were ticketed by NYPD officers for double parking on January 1st. We also had another gun arrest at the licensed premise on December 5th of last year where a patron was arrested for having a loaded 22 caliber revolver on his possession. Uh, on December 26, individuals were arrested for assaulting the bouncer at the door. And through my discussions with the Special Operations Lieutenant, he has said that this place is a drain on his resources and it is a very bad focal point. Uh, and then additionally, there's a third case that Council's office has against this premises. Uh, I presented my case and rested uh, three weeks ago, I believe, on June 13th, so two weeks ago. The crux of that case, it was a march operation, but the kind of the most glaring violation was that BCI uh, SLA investigator Gerald Pope discovered over $100,000 in purchase from an authorized source, and I have submitted evidence for that. And then as a final uh, note, the Special Operations Lieutenant late yesterday afternoon gave me a new referral that is not included in this memo, but it's in included in the charging instrument, and I'll describe it to you now. On March 25th of this year, the NYPD responded to calls of overcrowding at the licensed premises. They arrived at approximately 3.14 p.m., uh, I'm sorry, 3.14 a.m., discovering a massive crowd inside and outside the licensed premise, and there was a massive fight that kind of spanned inside and outside. The police spent over an hour dispersing that crowd, and the responding officers had to get a full precinct response to put that down. So it lasted over an hour, there was a full precinct response, and that was on March 25th. So that's just another uh, glaring example of a disorderly premise in addition to everything included in my memo. And, and for that reason, Council's office uh, uh, believes that there are rational bases to believe that this premise operates a clear and present danger to public health, safety, and welfare, and believes that a er emergency order of summary suspension is warranted here. I note that, that a, a radius report shows what? 28 arrests, 123 911 calls, and 45 C summons. Correct. Since just January, a year, past year and a half. Correct. So uh, Lieutenant Iglesias sent me this radius report, as you discussed. And as you said, 28 arrests within a 500-foot radius. Um, and kind of to supplement that, the uh, special operations lieutenant told me that I, he believes there's one other bar nearby, but he doesn't think that bar is a problem. He, the lieutenant 
can attest, he knows personally from firsthand experience that these crimes originate from patrons from this premise. And uh, there's, there's just one thing here, though, that uh, says since January 1st, the license was issued March 9th. So the, those for the first two or months or so, this place wasn't open. So that had to be the other bar. That that is possible, yes. Right. And then I'd also like to point out that there are residences nearby. And Hostos Community College is a block and a half over from this license premise. When did this place open? March 16, 2016. Six, so they've been open just a year and a half? Just Correct. Months, actually, yeah. But I'm saying these complaints right. were yeah. a little further before that. Okay. You prepared to vote? Yes. Um, to reiterate, reiterate, repeat myself, <laughs> uh, 28 arrests, 123 911 calls, 45 C sum summonses, $100,000 in unauthorized purchases of uh, inventory, um, not to mention slashings and illegal weapons uh, being found inside. I, I think it's without a doubt this place is a, uh, a danger to the, uh, to the community. And I, I vote to uh, for the summary order of suspension. Council, the, was there a license at this place prior to these people? Yes, there was a license. Were there, pro as, uh, yeah. were there problems with that license as yes. well? Yes. So there was a, an establishment called Karami Corp, serial number 113082. And we revoked that license on July 31st, 2012. And there are many of the same violations here. We were voked on sustained pattern of noise disorder, disorderly premise, failure to supervise, prohibited hours, and many of the same charges that I brought brought against this premise as well. There, uh, and then to clear the record, as far as I could tell, I can't see any relation between that previous ownership and this ownership. It could be there, but based on my review of the applications, it doesn't appear like that. I think they are distinct entities. But, but the same, same type of method of operation. Yeah, same method of operation and uh, same kind of uh, same uh, violations at that address. Okay. Well, it's obvious that this place is a drain on, on the police resources that they're obviously called there frequently. It's um, not only violence, but they're, they're basically disregarding most of the ABC law from what you tell us. So I'll vote to summarily suspend. Uh, it's clear that it's a uh, risk to public health, safety, and welfare and requires an emergency suspension. Thank you. Chairman, I have no other items on the calendar unless you have any other business to... Uh, no. Uh, Tom, hey, Tom. Yeah. I'm going to turn that off. Just sit there for a second. Sure, I'll sure. Turn All right. it off. All right. At this point, then, the meeting is adjourned. Donald...